Um, alright. <clears throat> Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Chris. Welcome to our new podcast. This is the Spectro Chat, where we're going to be talking about uh, social and financial and all sorts of problems or uh, different things that uh, we in the blind community have to deal with, whether it's us ourselves or uh, what we deal with uh, between the blind community and the sighted community. So um, the head of this project is our uh, chief of life skills, Mitch. So Mitch, take it away. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, our podcast here. We uh, In this podcast, we are discussing social issues with, uh, with the blind and versus getting to socialize with the uh, non-disabled peers. So if, the, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, <clears throat> uh, the topic we're going to be discussing is... Uh, social issues between the blind and sighted community, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up was uh, that it seems to not be really discussed. That it seems to almost be uh, kind of driven under the rug. Uh, I just... It seems that uh, not a lot of people like to discuss it, but I kind of wanted to bring that out in the open. And what's that? Uh, <clears throat> is that it seems, at least from what I have gathered from going to college and going through the public school system, that uh, a lot of sighted people are almost kind of directed towards uh, having this stigma of uh, people with uh, visual impairments and uh, just disabilities in general that uh, to even walk or to go and do something by yourself is seen as being, oh my gosh, how could you do that? <coughs> like, how could you uh, do this and do that when you, you can't see? Or, uh, you know, uh, or kind of being coddled to uh, uh, being taken care of. So basically the idea that doing anything when you're disabled is somehow an achievement. Yeah. yeah I don't like that either. It's just it's silly. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's interesting because you have, at least in my experience, you have two types of people. You have the type of people that will put you on a pedestal and like, oh my god, you're the blind Jesus you know for I mean that's how a lot of people act or they're like you know they question why you bother doing anything because you won't be good enough because you are disabled that's actually a pretty good uh, statement actually because it's actually it, it's very true it's two-sided there's exactly what you said the side that you know lifts you up and thinks you're a hero for being blind uh, and then there's the other side that says, you know, you should go ahead and let us do things for you because there's no point in you doing it. Um, my, you know, when it comes to us being out in, uh, it, it even feels weird for me to say it like this, but it's when we're out there in the real world, uh, and we're walking down the sidewalk, we're trying to get a cab, we're trying to, you know, make it to work or get on the train. Or There's always going to be um, somebody who comes up, and this is my biggest, one of my biggest pet peeves is when the, there's that one person who sees you with a white cane and they come up and grab you by the arm. Uh, and and uh, like, here, it's over here. And you can't help almost but be but jerk your arm out of their hand be like look man don't touch me like <laughs> i don't need i didn't ask brother 
I, I, I appreciate it, but uh, I didn't ask for the help. And it's that kind of thing. It's like you poor, unsighted fool. Like, uh, and you know, I personally, Mitch, I think this is a great topic to start with. And uh, you know, so let's let's really start digging into this. Let's let's get into the meat of this. I was uh, just actually going to start with uh, the way that uh, at least I have found is that it, I think it really starts with the parents mm. and kind of instilling this v or the view of or sighted parents to sighted children and viewing that anyone with a disability can do you know can be normal people. Uh, you know. That so what you're saying is is really good, but something you have to think about too, uh, a large percentage of people say their number one worst fear is going blind. And yeah, studies have shown that true. that is the number one fear about it, just for the simple fact that people think that blindness is isolating, which... In some ways it is, but... It is if you let it be. Exactly. Just like anything else, you have to, you know, train yourself how to, you know, you have to learn how to tie your shoes. You have to learn how to button a shirt. So you have to learn how to interact with people. And part of the problem with blind people is that they're, they're never taught how to interact effectively. Right. Uh, well, and, and if... Mitch, not to contradict you, but in my opinion, and I think it's good that we have different opinions on this, actually, but oh, yeah. from how I feel about it is not so much from the sighted person's point of view, because here's the deal. They're sighted. They can't, you can't expect them to know what it's like to yeah. not have sight when that's what they've come to expect their whole life. Just like a blind person who was born a total has no idea what it's like to be sighted. And it's that barrier that's always going to be there. Here's the problem, though. Here's where the line gets struck through the sand is when I don't think it's parents to kids in on the sighted part of things. I think it's parents to kids on the blind aspect of things. Parents... The problem is, is when... Uh, 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 two people have a child and it turns out that it's going to be blind they'll do one of two things now I understand it if that child has more than one problem which let's face the facts is oftentimes it's not just a visual impairment a lot of times it's more than that there's some mental scarring or damage there's physical attributes that are uh, put negatively onto that child. There's a few things that can be in play here. It's oftentimes it's not just a sight thing. But here's the problem for those kids who where it is just a sight problem, where it's just you have a visual impairment, you have optic atrophy, you have REM, you have something going on where it's just your sight. Um, Sometimes those kids are raised to, to think that they can't do anything by themselves. And they have to lean on their sighted parents. They have to live with them until they're like 40. And, you know, and then when those parents die, what, what does that sighted person, or what does that blind person do? You know, they, they go to a group home or something because they can't live by themselves because they were raised their whole life that they can't do anything. That's the problem I have. That's the stigmata that's kind of seeped into the blind community. And it, it, and it's really sad because I went to a blind training center in Colorado and where they went over, you know, daily living. Um, it's it's an adult education program, um, and I needed. I knew I, I didn't get a lot of blind skills as far as daily living stuff. I was I had really good mobility, but everything else needed work because I used my 
you know what little side I do have for technology and trying to cook and clean and it wasn't effective but when I went there there were, I can't even tell you how many people that I met they were in their mid to late 20s had never done anything like there was one person I saw didn't know how to open a container of yogurt and had no idea how to use a key well, yeah it's it's a common thing it's a common thing and it's when and look I'm thankful that I have SSI like that's cool but you know that's not something I want you know and if you're a blind person and you want to be independent that shouldn't be something you want either you know you should want to have a job you should want to make money you should want to actually go go out and feel the the pride of knowing that you accomplished something with your day you know and i think that's a major thing that's lacking within the blind community is so many blind kids are raised to believe that they uh the world owes them everything and they can just sit back and and just take it all yeah haven't they proven that like uh People who, who keep a job, who have like, a purpose still, tend to live longer. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's been proven that like people who retire too early tend to die earlier. Something about like not having something to do. It, it's just, it's, uh, what's the right word? Humans just waste away. Yeah. Like, we need to have a purpose. Something right, to I was do about to say that. Humans us. need purpose. Yeah. Yeah, we it's... can't just not do anything and that's the thing is and here's the thing that sighted parents do right is they raise their kids and they say you got to do things and that sighted person you know they grow up they what do they start normally they'll you know get a paper route or you know do something like that something small when they start off when they're younger you know, you know babysitting or you yeah. know working at a grocery store or bagging groceries or just you know, little things like that. And and they start off, they start off with you know, uh, you know already some backbone, and knowing that when I get out there, I need to do this. And uh, you know, it, 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 oftentimes it'll come to, you know, even if a blind person has gone to college, you know, they might just go back home and just that's it, that's it, just you know. And I think, and you know, I may get negative, you know, thoughts about this, but I think it's a lot of, it, it's always, always, always because of the parents and the adults in that person's life not encouraging them enough and not letting them be like, not telling them, hey, you can do just as much as sighted people. So go out there and do it because you can. Nothing can stop you. In this day and age, when we have things like Uber, we have things like the train stations, we have red caps who can help you at planes, at airports, I should say, and train stations. You know, we have all of this technology and all of these uh, different types of services to help us be able to complete our day. Why is it not getting used? Um, it's part. I think part of the reason why that is just me personally is just because a lot of blind people don't and low vision don't know what all's out there. But like, that's for, my point: is yeah. they're not encouraged to go out and they're not encouraged to, uh, you know, take life by the horns and be like, "This is what I can do." My father, you know, he raised me to understand that look, the world's gonna be on you, so hard on your shoulders, and it's not gonna be easy. So you need to make something of yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I mean, for... Right. Um, I, I was raised similarly, but what I meant is me, like, I've always been trying to work hard to try to prove myself because I was the only, you know, low vision individual that, would, that didn't have any cognitive issues in my school. And so <laughs> I always felt like I had to work harder. Mm -hmm. But my... But what I'm saying is not necessarily that 
you know nobody knows that they can do stuff is that you know there's also a huge demographic of people that lose sight later on in life you know it, they lose their sight in their late teens or in their 20s or 30s or whenever and they just don't know what like they don't even know that there's technology and that's right. that's what i'm talking about is that there's a huge disconnect on what is available to help them get back started for well, those that's a but that's a totally different shank of meat that we're talking about uh yeah you're right i, mean, I was gonna say for my living situation a lot of it was that my parents didn't know how to teach me right and a lot of times if i were to just mess with something it would make things worse off than what it was you know obviously like if i were to cook something you know it, i'd freaking burn it you know or, uh, <laughs> or no not well, even that's, that's part of the you want to know yeah. i mean the first time i tried to cook eggs i i burnt my hair and eyebrows because i got i i leaned way close to the burner to see if it was lit and i just yeah. just crisped me up yeah. but i mean it's a, here's the thing though Life it, is trial and error. It, yes. And it's you can't just do it and then be like, uh oh, I messed up. I better not do that again. No. You gotta you gotta keep cooking until that food doesn't get burnt. Or you yeah. don't get burnt. Yeah. So one or the other. Preferably both. <laughs> I know Oh, go ahead, Jacob. Okay, sorry. Uh for the parents, uh I know it's scary, like trying to help a blind child learn to cook, especially if you don't have, like, if you have a, a gas stove where there's actual fire. But it's just as dangerous for sighted people. It's just the dangers are different. You know, it's, we can't see what we're doing, so we have to learn different ways. But the key is to be there to help and to help them learn the ways they need to do things. Don't just give up because they can't do it the first time. No and, one can do it the first time. Yeah, and I mean, and a huge part of life nowadays is, you know, do your research. You know, look up how to teach a blind person to cook. There are plenty of articles and videos written by blind people that describe how to do so. And also, you know, see if there's any... Yeah, (laughs) blindspectrum.com. We have some stuff coming out. But, um, you know, reach out to... You know, there are government entities that help do training and stuff like that. But, I mean, there's there's always a way. Um, I know <clears throat> I actually caught a kitchen on fire once. Yeah. Like, the entire kitchen. Like, the, the fire, uh, fire... Chief of the fire department came on that specific call <laughs> and looked around and he was like... You did a really good job in here. <laughs> um, and I was I was frying chicken. I and of course this would have been. Uh huh. <laughs> Anyways, I was frying chicken. I had done it a hundred times, but just something about this past time, it just it, it just went up in flames. And you know, stuff like that is scary. Sure. I mean. The house was smoking. There were flames. I ended up putting it out, um, thankfully. But um, <clears throat> but you have to eventually get back on that horse and figure out. Okay, you you have to master it. Anything that you fail at, you have to try again until you get it right. Whether that's cooking, learning how to use jaws, or nvda or how to use braille you have to even when it's hard you have to get back up and do it again but again until now now we're getting into you know those things we were originally talking about social skills uh, the, right the so social I, connection i feel like they're all related though and, in a way it's kind of like uh it's sort of like just well, staring at a web a it's a lot web. of it, though, is identifying that, you know, social ability, showing your parents that you need to learn how to do something. Well, it, yes, that, a part though, of it is... And accepting it, though. 
That's well, the, yeah, I mean, it's wanting, it's actually wanting to reach out and take that independence and show I can do this, but that's why my, my statement, and I, you know, this is the truth, is that, you know, it starts with the parents encouraging that child to begin with. Now, I mean, let's imagine that, you know, that person's independent and fine and good and, you know, out there in the world, you know, let's talk about the, the, the difference when it comes to the sighted with the blind. You know, I, one of the most common problems, and I, you know, it's kind of what I said at the beginning is like, you know, when sighted people come up and, you know, they'll just... They won't ask or anything. They'll just be like, this way. You come with me now. <laughs> it's like, whoa, way. Uh, Let go of me. Oh, uh, or pre assault. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, or assault just when they come up and grab you by the... You I have <laughs> all dealt with it. I have no doubt. I think you're underestimating. They uh, can assault you and kidnap you at the same time. I, I hate <laughs> to cut us off here, but it's been... Uh, uh, our the end of our first episode uh, for no, it this hasn't. podcast. It's not. I, I no, it for it's 20. not. I, I, I said, said it for. 20. I said it for twenty. I said it when you were start, when you were talking. Ah, uh, yeah, damn it. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> so obviously, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that we're gonna keep doing. This is our new project that we're gonna be rolling out. Stay tuned for this because we feel like. We at Blind Spectrum really believe that these things need to be talked about. They need to get issued, handled, rather. These issues need to get handled. That's what I want to say. <laughs> and, um, you know, just uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in the next one. Have a good one. And uh, if you want to check out what we're doing, check us out at blindspectrum.com, where you can see all of our forum stuff where we talk about this type of thing till then we'll see you in the next one have a good one peace out guys see you next time <laughs>